Golurk is an awesome Pokemon, but it's not popular at all competitively. Stat-wise, it does have some insane attack at base 124, but other than that, it's lacking in both bulk and speed. However, it does have some fun tricks. It has the ability No Guard, which guarantees that every move will hit, and we compare this super nicely with the move Dynamic Punch. This is a 100 power fighting move that always confuses the target. The catch is that it's 50% accurate, but Golurk does not care. We toss on the Choice Band held item, and Golurk is literally punch and fool silly, and Stab Earthquake hits really hard along with Poltergeist, and it can even use Trick to give away the Choice Band and force opponents to be stuck in a move. Overall, Golurk is an overlooked Pokemon that can be pretty solid. Alright, look, if Golurk isn't one of your favorite Gen 5 Pokemon, it's gotta be crazy to be so wrong. This thing has just like a ton of different fun ways that it can be played, and no one just wants to give any love to our big clay buddy. So that's what I'm here for. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the crazy, chrome, futuristic-ass Santa Claus deli bird, and I have just a little guy. Now, this is not an ideal lead just because I know that a freeze-dry is going to be pretty bad for me. Now, looking at the team matchup here, Iron Bundle kind of cleans up. Look, this thing's faster than everything. It hits extremely hard. The only possible switch in I have would be something like the Jirachi. But Jirachi also looks pretty solid in this matchup, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for Stealth Rock. And as it turns out, yep, I'm going to get my ass freeze-dried into the Shadow Realm, and down goes the Quagsire. So, in hindsight, there was pretty much no reason not to just go into Jirachi there. I think I got in my head a bit about thinking that maybe they're going to, like, flip turn. But then again, you don't against a Water Absorb Quagsire. It's fine. It, Quagsire goes down, and we're starting this match off with a nice little 5-6 little to six game here. So, at least now I can get a nice little switch into the Jirachi, and I can definitely threaten this thing. I also don't know if that thing's going to be Specs. We haven't seen a Booster Energy. I kind of imagine it's going to be, you know, probably like Boots or Specs, but... I decided to go for the trick, because whatever comes in probably does not want a Choice Scarf. Now, it turns out they decide to go into the Arcanine here. I'm actually going to give that thing a Scarf and take its Choice Band, which it doesn't really hinder either of us, but it does tell me now that, of course, this thing is going to be Scarf. A lot of the time, you know, Hisuian Arcanine is going to be either Band or Scarf, so knowing kind of what this thing is now, at least that's going to help, and I can potentially use that Choice Band for Jirachi just for bigger damage, or even try to trick it to... Uh, a more defensive Mon later. So I decided to switch into the Salamence here. I know that definitely a Flare Blitz is coming, and this good boy here does hit like a damn stone truck. So I can come in with that Intimidate, and I also resist with the Salamence, and I'm in a pretty good spot here. So I'm obviously, I'm running special attacking Salamence here, and while the Hydro Pump does look pretty nice, I decide to go for the Draco Meteor. It covers for switches, and just does the kind of best damage for me, but it turns out they actually bring in this salty asshole, <laughs> the Arganacle. Uh, would have been very satisfying to hit that Hydro Pump, but at least I'm able to do a nice little chunk there with the Draco Meteor. And this stupid Minecraft Salty Gorilla here is quite annoying. I, I figure a lot of the time you see something like a Body Press with Iron Defense, and I do not want to be set up on. This is literally got to be one of my most hated Pokemon to play against. I, honestly, I feel like I should make a video on my least favorite Pokemon to play against. Moral of the story, this fella is going to be there. So I decided to go into the Whimsicott here, just because... Uh, as they set up the Stealth Rock, I have a couple different options. Either I could taunt it to guarantee that it can't set up, I can potentially Leech Seed, I can threaten it with some Grass Shenanigans, and also see if I want to draw out a Terra from this thing. They are going to often Terra, but as I'm looking at it, I really feel like I can grab some momentum here, thinking that maybe they switch into the uh, Galarian Slowking here. That's what I would switch into on the Whimsicott, so I'm going to try to make a nice little double and go into the Golurk, expecting that thing to come in. Golurk says, hey, what's happening? I'm also a pretty big, you know, golem-looking guy. But they actually just go for the Protect, which is Exhibit B of why this thing is so damn annoying. But also, this is kind of a fine matchup for me. The switch into the Golurk was a good middle ground play for me, just because I win this matchup anyway. And also, I'm going to try to go for the trick. So I am Choice Band, which does allow me to do a ton of damage with both Dynamic Punches and Earthquakes. But I figure if I can get a trick and give this a Choice Band... He's going to have a bad time. I mean, they do actually stay in, which is amazing. And uh, I just go ahead to steal this thing's leftovers. Listen, leftovers taste much better when they come from a Garganacle. Extra salty. So he ends up going for the recover. <laughs> and uh, that's while ordinarily I'd be like, God damn it, I hate that. It's actually fine because now it's actually stuck in recover. And uh, this thing cannot change its moves. So it's going to be a whole lot easier to deal with. 
in the long run. So I decided to go for the dynamic punch. I probably should have just gone for the earthquake, but it's just too fun to confuse stuff. So as I go for that dynamic ass punch, he's gonna end up going into the Galarian Slowking. Now it turns out they really don't have much that wants to take uh, an earthquake from Golurk. That's kind of their best defensive option. And honestly, of course, this thing does not want to take an earthquake either. I imagine it's probably gonna be kind of just a sack switch in here so that they can get momentum with bringing in Bundle after. Um, I'm thinking maybe they Terra here, but Golurk is just out here smashing. I go for an earthquake, and that is just straight out gonna knock this thing out even without my choice band. And down goes the Glow King. That thing can be annoying, so it's good to see that fella gone. And sadly, now they get a switch into whatever they like. And of course, it is Christmas time out here. So, I actually, while ordinarily a switch would be optimal here, obviously I don't have anything that wants to come in on this. So, I decide this is a pretty good time to go ahead and commit to the Terra. I'm gonna go Terra Fighting here because what that's gonna do is guarantee that I can live you know, an Ice Beam or a Freeze Dry, and then I actually get a nice little stab dynamic punch after taking the attack, and then punch this thing into freaking summertime. So, I put the fist on my head, looking amazing. However, they actually end up expecting the switch, they go for the flip turn, and uh, gonna save the bundle for later. So, that's actually not great for me, because now, they know what they know what's happening. They saw the dynamic punch, they see the Terra fighting, I'm definitely gonna go punching and I punch right through the freaking Gengar, which is unfortunate. So, a good flip turn on their end, as uh, it makes me use my Terra, and they get the free switch in, and at this point, I know that this Gengar, unless it has some type of coverage, it probably doesn't knock me out here. However, Golurk does look pretty nice, and with that Terra fighting, I know that I can live an attack from Bundle later, so I decide to save the big boy, and I'm like, hey, I also have a pretty ghostly fella. I decide to go into uh, the Spirit Tomb here. Now, I know that I can definitely take more than likely two attacks from the Gengar. They go for the Sludge Bomb, and that does a solid amount of damage with a resisted hit. And I'm like, damn, what's, what is Buddy cooking over here with the Gengar? But uh, at this point, honestly, Spirit Tomb's in a pretty good position to either start setting up Calm Mines, or I can expect uh, maybe just another damage option here and go for a Pain Split. I do decide to go for that Pain Split, and they're gonna actually end up switching that thing out, and they're gonna bring in uh, their big fella once again. So as the Guard comes in, Pain Split is kind of satisfying just because it basically it heals me nicely, so now I have a, a switch in option again uh, to the Gengar. And also, the Garg is definitely not in the same position it was earlier. With this thing, we know that it's choice banded, it has to lock itself into a move, and they, of course, are going to go for the Salt Cure. So he's going to try to get some delicious Salt Cure Ghost action going on here as I take a nice opportunity to set up a Calm Mind. Honestly, Spirit Tomb with Calm Mind as I'm running a more defensive build, and then you start to get some good special defense going. This thing can be extremely annoying to deal with, and uh, this is kind of a perfect mon to set up against here. So I get that Calm Mind, and while we are extra salty over here, the mon is like kind of fine with that. We have the Leftovers Recovery, and at this point, I can go for some pretty solid damage, but also there's kind of no reason for me not to just go for a second Calm Mind, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. So. The Garganuckle came in, got me salty, and then just bails, as now they go in back into the Arcanine. They figure, maybe if this thing's starting to set up a uh, special defense, I should probably hit it on the physical side. And this thing is unfortunate because it just has so much power, at, uh, even without its choice band. It's choice scarf at the moment, it can do a lot with head smash or flare blitz. So, I get that second calm mind up, the mind is looking extremely calm out here, and also we got salt on the mind. So. I'm in a pretty good spot to where I know that I can definitely take an attack here, and I'm gonna end up going for the Pain Split. I figure they do enough damage to me where Pain Split is gonna heal me a lot. However, I actually go first, which is confusing as shit because it turns out they actually went for the Roar. So, dude's got the Choice Scarf Roar, and they decide they, they want nothing to do with that Spirit Tomb, which honestly, I don't blame them because that thing can get out of hand pretty quickly. So, uh, the Roar actually does draw in the Salamence, which is pretty ideal. And uh, as I get the Intimidate, it doesn't really matter because this thing is, you know, stuck in Roar at this point. So I basically, I know they're either gonna switch or just take an attack. So I decided to go for the Draco Meteor and they're actually just gonna go right back into the Garg. I really, two times this match, I should have clicked Hydro Pump because for whatever reason, Salamence can learn Hydro Pump. I don't know how the hell Buddy does it, but he does. So in comes this thing and uh, we get a nice little amount of chip damage there. And again, with uh, this thing being choice banned, it really, it can recover, but it's like, at what cost? So, <laughs> it allows me, essentially, a free switch here. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go back into the Golurk. Because Golurk is in a spot where, unless the Iron Bundle gets, you know, the free switch in, or like a revenge switch in, this thing kind of, it covers for a lot. So, they go for that Salt Cure once again, and uh, at this point, I have the option of either going for the Dynamic Punch, 
or the Earthquake. And then as I'm looking at the matchup, they obviously, they have the switch into the Dynamic Punch in the form of that Gengar. And the only way the Golurk has a bad time is if they're able to freely get in something faster. So I actually decide a pretty good middle ground play here is expecting the Gengar to come in. I'm just gonna go for the knockoff. It should have enough damage to straight up knock that thing out. But if they go into anything else, they're gonna you know, lose their item. And Earthquake, Honestly, it does pretty, just about the same. There's really nothing that wants to come in on an Earthquake anyway, but they do go into this Gengar here, and I'm like, hey, knock it off, Gengar. And he actually tells me to knock it off in return because I get cursed bodied, but it does actually end up knocking that thing out, and we knock off his glasses because it was actually Choice Specs Gengar, which kind of explains why Sludge Bomb did way more than I thought it would. And that is fantastic because that thing is definitely a pretty hard-hitting problem, and it's fast, and now it's dead. So... We do take some Assault Cure damage, which is mostly fine, and of course the bad news about knocking something out is that now the freaking Revenge Killer comes in and Bundle is annoying. So, at this health, I know that uh, a Hydro Pump is kind of the only thing that knocks me out here, so I'm like, you know what? Spiritomb probably doesn't have that big of a role in the remainder of this endgame, so I decided to just bring this thing in to kind of sponge and see what this thing wants to do. I could have opted to leave the Golurk again, because if this thing's not Specs, I actually take like you know, 45% from a freeze dry, but I bring this thing in as they actually end up going for the air cutter. And I was like, what the hell did you just do? I literally, I think I looked away and I was like, what did that thing just click? It turned air cutter would probably have hilariously been like the best damage apart from a hydro pump there. And uh, it has a high crit chance. I don't know what buddy's doing with the air cutter. He's cutting it up out here, but spirit tomb's like, Hey, that is fine. I guess I came in kind of expecting to be a two eight KO there, but that's fine because if you're not going to assess the problem that is Spiritomb, you're going to have to freaking deal with it. So I go for that Calm Mind, and I honestly, I love this thing's animations in this game. The thing is sick as hell. So, in comes the big ass Palms, and he's like, hey, stop what you are doing right now. I always feel like this thing's sick, holding his hands up, telling him in the middle of a freaking crosswalk or something. But, I know that I can take an attack from this thing. I decide to go for the Will-O-Wisp here, just because it'll kind of hinder anything that this thing wants to do. But they actually end up going for the Volt Switch, and they're going to go right back into the Arcanine on the Will-O-Wisp, which is kind of annoying, just because, of course, they get uh, essentially the free switch there. And we do know that the Arcanine has the option to roar me out. I do only have one Combine set up here, uh, but I am kind of worried about, like, a Head Smash. It probably is close to a KO here, um, but I just decide I'm going to go for that Dark Pulse, try to get as much damage as possible, and uh, see what they want to do. I do go first, because I'm the fastest damn ghost alive. But actually, they just clicked the roar. So they roar me out and uh, freaking phasing out my setup with the spirit tomb. He's going to get his day. Don't you worry. This thing is going to set up on somebody. And he's going to give him a bad time. So this actually ends up bringing in just the exact guy we want to see. Band-Aid comes in and uh, nice and sparkly and crystally out here with his crazy fist on his head. After some leftover recovery, we're still eating the leftovers from the Garg, uh, which is actually hilarious and amazing. I'm going to go for the Dynamic Punch here just because it does knock this thing out. We know this thing is locked in uh, to that roar, and they have nothing that can switch in here. So the Deep Punch does take care of it. We punch him in the most dynamic possible fashion, and down goes the Doggo. So after some leftover recovery, um, I know that I'm in a pretty good spot to take pretty much anything here. And hey, listen, everybody's gangster until the Go Lurk starts starts lurking so they go back into the iron hands and while this thing does likely have some decent damage against me i still feel like i can take an attack here so here's the plan they decide to go for the fake out does a little bit of chip there doesn't really matter i do know that the iron hands without my choice band does live in earthquake so my best bet is actually to go for the dynamic punch here i, I know that i can uh, get some good damage with it but more importantly get it confused they go for the wild charge which i actually barely end up living which is Honestly, very surprising. It allows me to go for that dynamic punch, and there's two things that need to happen here. First of all, I do a nice chunk with that dynamic punch with that Terra, and uh, I get it confused. So I bring it down to half, and now, in this situation, since this thing is faster than me, uh, the only way that I actually could knock this thing out and win this matchup is if it hits itself in confusion, and then I can finish it with an earthquake. So it's like, I needed two attacks to knock this thing out, and it just turns out that confusion sometimes comes in extremely clutch because he punches himself in the face with his big-ass fists, and I feel like it should do more to itself when you have that big of hands. But now you can just go for that Earthquake. And I was able to knock out that Iron Hands in the most hilarious way possible. And honestly, it's got to be quite frustrating to play against 100% accurate Dynamic Punches. No Guard is hilarious. They need to bring back freaking Machamp because it's also a fun strat with Machamp anyway. But uh, Golurk just flexes on him real quick one time. And this does bring back in freaking Bundle, who's been switching in for free all day long just because I wasn't able 
to get them rocks up earlier, which is annoying, but mostly fine. So now they go into the bundle. I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to kill my Golurk. This thing is how <laughs> you're surviving, surprisingly. So I can now go into the Jirachi. I know this switches in relatively freely here. Uh, they do actually just go for the flip turn. Nice play because it would knock out the Golurk anyway. But also, yeah, and that now allows the Garg to come in uh, against the Jirachi, which is uh, not ideal because we've gotten some good damage off on this thing. They're probably not going to be able to take an Iron Head. And I'm like, hold on. Actually, I can, I, I can just start mashing out here. So I go ahead and throw a star at this thing's face. And we love Serene Grace Jirachi just because we get that attack boost. And now the final Mon being that bundle, it has basically nothing to do uh, against the Jirachi. So as this thing comes in, he's still at full health and... He's going to stay at full health because they're actually just going to go ahead and run. But I just kind of thought that was just a fun, goofy-ass game. And terrifying dynamic punches are hilarious. Now, that brings us into match number two. So we've got a little bit of a team switch up here. Messing around with some different stuff. However, the Golurk remains the same. Let's go ahead and get into it. So this time my opponent, they are working with some sticky webs in the form of, of course, the Galvantula. I decided to lead off with the Don Fan here, and we have kind of a kind of a weird mind game going on. So here's the thing. I could expect them to go for the sticky web turn one and then click rapid spin, or I could click the earthquake and guarantee that things focus ash is gone, or they could just straight up click energy ball and that knocks me down to one HP. Now I figure Donphan is most useful to me here, being able to rapid spin away the sticky web later. So I decide, expecting something like the energy ball, I'm going to go into Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome, and I set up the Misty Surge in the process. Turns out they actually just go for that sticky web, and uh, it wasn't a great idea. But at least in this position here, I know that I can take an attack, and I can do my best to either flamethrower or just try to get any amount of damage here. Now, I opt for the Strange Steam just because... If they, it covers for a switch the best, and it, honestly the main thing I need to do here is just get some damage. It turns out they go for that thunder, and that does a ton of damage, and also their freaking life orb. So, as I steam them, I really probably should have just roasted them with a flamethrower. And at this point, it, that's kind of unfortunate, because I also, I don't really have a whole lot that wants to come in here. And I'm like, hmm, this thing's role on the team is to set up the... Uh, the terrain for little little shenanigans in the back. But of course, at this health and being slow, Weezing doesn't really provide me a whole lot of value. So they do finish me off with that Volt Switch, and uh, that thing is going to be tucked in the back for later. So the good thing, at least, about them killing me with that Volt Switch is that I do get to see what they want to bring in, and then I can decide myself a nice little beneficial matchup. So they decide to go into the most bulbous boy in the game. Uh, the Clotzire comes in, and this looks like a pretty good spot to go into the Golurk here. So... As Golurk comes in, I obviously threaten this thing with a nice little Choice Bandit Earthquake. Of course, we get caught up in some Sticky Web, which doesn't really matter. I'm slow anyway. And as I'm looking at it here, I kind of feel like maybe potentially they switch into the Appleton here. So I'm actually just going to go for the trick. Turns out they do stay in, which is honestly kind of fine. Because giving this thing a Choice Band is going to, again, just getting defensive Mon's choice is honestly extremely satisfying. So I steal his boots. Somehow they fit me. And they actually end up going for the toxic spikes there so it, this team has kind of weird synergy and i was messing around with that terrain with the uh what works with it on the wigglytuff but honestly it kind of gives me a position to actually go right into donfan here and because that psychic terrain is up i actually do not get poisoned so i do still get caught up in the sticky web which is fine um, but i figure the klutz air probably switches out here and then donfan can kind of guarantee keeping my sturdy I can get a rapid spin off. So they decide to go back into the Galvantula here. And while this thing has a nice little bit of chip here, I figure even if they do have the energy ball, they probably don't have that coverage considering they didn't use it earlier. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for the rapid spin here and just get away the, uh, not only the sticky web, but also that layer of the toxic bike. So they actually go for the bug buzz there. And uh, after some life orb recoil, it's actually going to put it in a spot where the rapid spin is able to kill. And uh, that's like the best feeling ever because we get rid of the sticky web, also killing the sticky web setter and don't have to worry about any toxic spikes. So Donphan is kind of in a bad spot having taken so much damage, but honestly getting rid of those hazards uh, it was some pretty solid value. So after some leftover recovery, we're looking like I'm kind of just a sitting duck to be destroyed by a freaking apple. And wouldn't you know it, a freaking apple pie is turns out to just come out and be like, what's happening? He, but he can't see a damn thing, but... He knows that uh, he's going to do some damage. So here's the thing. I decide if there's any time to do it, I'm going to go into Wigglytuff now. This Wigglytuff is basically here with the ability to go for the Misty Explosion on the Misty Terrain. And uh, 
it can have some fun little shenanigans going on. So they actually decide to go for the apple acid, and that is perfect for a few reasons. First of all, I know that I can take it nicely, but since it drops my special defense, it actually sharply boosts my special attack with that competitive ability, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Now, looking at this apple, surely it's going to be Terra Steel. If I know an Appleton like I know a freaking apple pie, Buddy's going to go for a Terra Steel here. So I decided to predict that and go for the Flamethrower instead. Uh, but it turns out it actually is going to be, it is going to Terra, at least. But it's freaking, it's Terra Fairy, which is annoying. Because uh, I'm not going to be able to get the crazy Flamethrower damage on a Steel Boy. And instead it takes that super nicely, uh, which allows him to fire off another Apple Acid. He probably thought that kills me with the special defense drop, but instead... I actually live, which is kind of amazing. Get another sharp special attack boost. But sadly, the mist is going to disappear. So here's the gimmick with this. I have the Custat Berry, which allows me to go first guaranteed, or at least in my priority back bracket. And uh, I pop the Custat Berry. I'm supposed to be able to just explode on the terrain. But instead, I just uh, go ahead and bop his ass with a Dazzling Gleam. And uh, it is annoying that that uses up my Custat, just because, boy, would it be really satisfying to use on the next Mon that comes in. But I was in range for it, so it is what it is. And now they get the nice safe switch in with the Roaring Moon. So this thing is a little bit frightening, and it also is going to activate that Protosynthesis with the booster energy and gives it a nice little attack boost. So this thing is extremely scary. I just clicked a Misty Explosion on the off chance they don't attack, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to just destroy me. So down goes the Vigglytuff, but hey, we took care of the Appleton, and I'm like, hey, that's actually still fine. It was satisfying to get uh, competitive to activate twice, but without the Misty Explosion on the terrain, it's not gonna be great. So, at least at this point, I can go into the Jirachi. Seeing as this thing didn't get a speed boost earlier, I know that I will be faster with the Choice Scarf, so I decide to go for the U-turn, expecting maybe they switch. Instead, they actually do stay in, and the U-turn actually does a solid chunk of damage, and we get the critical hit. So. At this point, it's not super ideal just because now I have to bring in something that wants to take a freaking attack boosted whatever from a Roaring Moon. I decide it, only fans needs to die. I come in basically as a sack here, but it turns out they're actually going to taunt. And Don Fan's like, hey, I get to stay alive for another minute. Just take a few more breaths of fresh air out here. Enjoy a nice little bite out of a leftover apple. Life is good out here. But we're basically on our deathbed because this thing is going to just destroy me with an acrobatics. And uh, down I go. But that's honestly exactly what I needed to do is just get the sack there. Um, and uh, I'm free to go back into the Jirachi because Choice Scarf Rachi is out here killing dragons. Like it's his damn job. So Rachi is extra spicy today. And that comes uh, with the benefit of being able to outspeed Roaring Moons that don't have a speed boost. So hell yeah. So I can just go ahead and knock this thing out with a U-turn. I decide to go for the U-turn just in case they wanted to switch into Claude Sire. Not likely on the chance that I have, you know, the uh, the Zen headbutt, but uh, they saw that I was Choice Scarf and I'm not gonna go for that against the Roaring Moon, but the U-turn is just a nice play there that allows me now a switch into the big boy himself. So here's the thing, Golurk has a pretty solid matchup here where they get to choose whatever they want against this thing, but they're actually now down to three Pokemon. They have the Claude Sire, which they decide to go in here, and in the back, they have the Skeledurge along within Alolan Sandslash. So, Golurk is looking pretty nice in the late game here, and they decide to bring in the Claude Sire. So, here's the thing. I don't know, if this thing is fully defensive, it can live in Earthquake, and then it can fire off, like, a potentially, like, a Choice Banded Liquidation would be hilarious, but I will not be killed by my own Choice Band today. It's more than likely this thing does have some type of water coverage, but I decide to go for the Terra Fighting. That's just gonna get rid of my weakness. Uh, to anything this thing can throw at me, and also just look badass with a fist on my head. Sometimes you gotta do it to him. So, uh, I do outspeed, I can go for that Earthquake. A lot of the time these things are especially defensive, and this one is. I'm able to knock it out with that Earthquake. Nice and satisfying being able to clear that thing out with one hit, which is awesome. And also, with the Terra Fighting, this now gives me at least no super effective hits from this Alolan Sand Slash. So, as the Sand Slash comes in, this thing is definitely gonna be faster than me because I'm slow as hell. And uh, I decide this is, it seems like a great time to go for a dynamic punch. It is four times effective, but here's some fun shenanigans. They decide to go for the Snowscape. That not only gives this thing Slush Rush, but also it gives it a 50% boost to defense. And here's a fun fact. While I am able to just absolutely obliterate this fella, just shatter his ass into pieces with a dynamic punch, if I wasn't Terra fighting, it actually would have just barely lived that, thanks to the uh, defensive boost that comes from the snow. So. I thought that was just kind of fun and interesting, and also the Terra comes in extremely clutch. And now the final Pokemon is going to be this Skeledurge. Now, if you know anything about Skeledurge, this thing's not going to go down without a damn fight. It, of course, does have the Will-O-Wisp, and a Burnt Golurk is not going to be able to do too much here, even with a nice little stab Earthquake. 
it is <laughs> not going to do a lot, which is annoying. But considering this is the last Mon, I should at least have some answers in the back. And the plan is to just kind of let Golurk finish it off for him. I'm going to go for the knockoff just to uh, get rid of any item that they have. Is it Torch Songs? I know that I can take a few of them. Does get the special attack boost and Skeledurge just doing Skeledurgely bullshit. <laughs> I actually, I get rid of his heavy duty boots. This dude is afraid as hell of hazards. I think this is the second pair of boots Buddy's got on the team. How many boots do you got over here? Fucking Foot Locker out here. But <laughs> I can go I, knowing that uh, all I need to really do here is just knock this thing into range where I can just pick it off with anything in the back. But of course, it goes for the slack off. Average Skeledurd user be slacking off out here. This is no time for slacking off because I'm like, damn it, just at least <laughs> just let me kill you for real. I can just Earthquake again. It's about half. And uh, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually no more shenanigans. I'm going in to the Salamence here. They've used up their Terra, so I know this thing isn't going to go for any crazy... Uh, like Terra Fairy or anything like that. And also Salamence is able to at least resist that Torch Song. So I don't want this thing to get out of hand with too many um, special attack boosts. As it actually slacks off again. It just slacking off in the snow. It's a sunny day out here on the schoolyard. It's a weird day to be out here. And uh, it's a weird day to be a Skeledurge because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump. Just because Hydro Pump Salamence is amazing. It does do well over half. And so here's one of the fun things about special Salamence is people be will o you out here. I can get burnt and be fine because we hit on the special side out here, baby. And I think it would be extremely satisfying if I can uh, Hydra Pump this thing just out of the freaking schoolyard. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to... I think Draco Meteor actually probably does it anyway. But I go for the Hydra Pump. I do connect twice in a row because Salamence is the GOAT. And that does take care of the Skeledurge. And that's going to be the end of the match there. So honestly, just another kind of just goofy and interesting match. And that's what we do. We just be out here hacking around. So, here's the thing. Listen, I have one more bonus battle for you because the Golurk is fun. And if there's anybody still watching this long into the video, shout out to you because you're amazing. But, this final game we have here is against an extremely scary team. Pretty much everything on this squad is a massive threat. Except for the Garg, it's just a threat in a different way. But, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it. Again, if you've been listening to me talk about Pokemon for this long, you should probably hit that like button and also leave a comment. I really have a fun time reading all the comments. You guys are actually amazing. So, here's the thing. They decide to lead off with the turtle, as to be expected. There's one thing you can guarantee, and that's the Sun Team's going to freaking toss out the turtle. And while I am threatened by a Solar Beam, Quagsire has an interesting matchup here to where I figure they probably go for Stealth Rock. And I do want to prioritize getting Stealth Rock up of my own, and I'm also faster. So, I just go ahead and sprinkle some rocks over there. As uh, Torkoal, even the battle just started, buddy, he's already sleepy. Goes for the yawn, and I'm like, well, that's uh, kind of annoying, because I don't really want anything to be put to sleep here. And while I did want some chip with an earthquake, uh, I, I'm kind of forced to switch here, because a sleeping Quagsire is damn useless. So I decide to go into the Salamence here, and honestly, Torkoal is just, it, it's an annoying Pokemon for me because of the fact that it can, it can honestly do some pretty big damage, but it can come back in later, set up some sun, and I really just need some chip on this thing, because I don't have a whole lot that deals with it. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to bring in the Salamence here as they set up their Stealth Rock. It's time to drop a Draco out here. Again, this thing is just defensive, and some chip is going to be real helpful here, especially since I was able to do that amount of damage. It honestly looks like it's pretty close to being in range to where it can't switch into the Stealth Rock. So they did go for the Yawn, but Salamence's nap time is not this time. So I'm like, you know what, I did the damage I needed, and I can just pretty freely go right back into the Quagsire here. Kind of no reason not to, um, as Torkoal kind of is in a weird spot as well where it can't do much to Salamence in return. But I bring in this thing just because Quagsire honestly looks pretty good against almost anything. I would like to keep the Quagsire relatively healthy for being a nice check to the Sneasler later, but they actually, we got a nice little double switch here, and they're going to go into the Golden Go. And this thing is going to absolutely, absolutely golden go to hell because I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to just go for that Earthquake. While I know I can take any attack it wants to throw at me, the Shadow Ball is going to do a huge chunk and it does allow me to fire off that EQ. And while it doesn't quite finish it off, it does put it in range to be pretty easy to take care of later. And the bad news is I did kind of use up Quagsire to where it's not going to be great against uh, things like the Sneasler. There's a lot of sweepers in the back. It, Quagsire does still potentially have an option to switch into like a Walking Wake. Hydra Steam and uh, Water Absorb myself back to health. So I'm like, I'm going to try to do that later on. Now, I can bring in the Spirit Tomb, who isn't necessarily specially defensive, but I figure I can take a couple Shadow Balls here. Uh, I come in, and it does do a whole lot. But again, 
this Spiritomb's kind of role on the team is to be able to just switch into stuff and just kind of be annoying with potential to, uh, you know, pain split and things like that. But in this situation, I don't really have a whole lot that wants to come in on Golden Go, and it does just finish me off with the Dazzling Gleam. So the Spiritomb doesn't get to get much going there, which is unfortunate, but it does open up a nice little revenge option here to go into the Salamence once again. And Special Attacking Salamence actually has an option to go for a nice little, little flamethrower in the sun, uh, which is always fun to be using the sun against him. I am able to outspeed because Salamence quick as hell. It feels like Golden Go should be faster. He's literally riding around on like a freaking golden skateboard a lot of the time, but his skateboard needs new fucking wheels because he does not go quite fast enough and the Salamence is able to take care of it with the Flamethrower. So that's honestly a pretty hard hitting threat out of the way. And also here's a hard hitting threat. The freaking Backscalibur comes in. So in this situation here, I really feel like this wants to set up and it's probably gonna use a Terra. Um, but I'm actually going to go for a Terra of my own because on the chance that this thing just tries to go for, you know, something like a, an Icicle Spear, Icicle Crash, or just a Dragon Move, I'm going to go for the Terra Water, and Salamence is now looking like a true Hydro Pumper, a little fountain on his head. So my plan is to pretty much just Draco Meteor the hell out of him, but it turns out they have, this is actually kind of funny, they have the exact same plan. They're like, you know what, he's going to go for a super effective Dragon Move, not letting it happen as they actually have the Terra Water of their own. So we got a couple of uh, fountain dragons out here, and it's uh, it is awkward. It's like, god damn, we are wearing the same thing to the fucking event. And as I go for the Draco Meteor, I am faster, however, it's just barely able to hang on, which is quite unfortunate because now it allows it to go for the Dragon Dance. And while I was faster earlier after a Dragon Dance, this thing is certainly going to outspeed, and I am in danger. I don't really have anything that wants to switch into whatever this Backscalibur wants to do. And I'm like, well, I could go Quagsire and try to sack that thing and then bring in a switch. But then I'm like, you know what, depending on what this thing wants to go for, do I live in attack? It turns out, however, a Glaive Rush is the most overpowered thing ever, and yeah, I just straight up die. So down goes the Salamence, and I do effectively waste the Terra. I really probably should have gone uh, for the sack switch into the Quagsire there. In hindsight, definitely should not have stayed in there. Glaive Rush is insane. But... And the good news is, this thing is only at plus one speed, and I effectively have a Jirachi that's also at plus one speed with that Choice Scarf. And my base 100 and everything ass is going to be able to go faster than this thing, and I can go for the Zen Headbutt. And luckily, we were able to get the chip we needed with that Salamence and the Zen Headbutt. We hit him with the old pointy ass forehead, I guess top of my head, <laughs> does take care uh, of the Backscalibur. So, that's good for a few reasons, most of all just because Backscalibur with Dragon Dances is literally insane to beat, but also they used up their Terra, so I don't have to worry about anything changing, and also they now decide to go into the Torkoal to try to set the sun up, but as it turns out, not today, mister, it's not in the forecast, because the Stealth Rock actually knocks it out before it's able to uh, come in and live to activate the Drought, and that is honestly extremely clutch, because now as Walking Wake comes in, I'm in a spot where this thing would be a whole lot more scary with the sun up, but also, I know that I'm faster, so I'm like, you know what, Jirachi, let's go for a Zen Headbutt here. With that Choice Scarf, I can potentially flinch. Yeah, with Serene Grace, does not come through for us. It allows it to fire off the, uh, the Flamethrower, and honestly, I don't know if this thing has Choice Specs. Really what it's working with, but it can't go for a Hydro Steam because it's not going to be boosted by the Sun. But also, I have the Water Absorb Quagasaur. So, I'm actually just going to go into the Whimsicott, and without this thing being like a Protosynthesis Speed Boost, I'm actually faster. And while I am 50% cotton, we are able to throw 100% of the moon at his ass. And that takes care of the walking wake, which is absolutely amazing as well. So without the sun, I, they really kind of lost a good bit of uh, opportunity there, which is awesome. But they do still have threats. And of course, Sneasler comes in. This thing is might even just be the scariest on their team. So we see the air balloon, which tells me uh, if I pop this thing's air balloon, it's going to get its unburdened ability, be able to outspeed, but honestly, I just decide to Moonblast. That's mostly just because I need some chip there, and I know it's going to do knock it to around half. But, of course, a Dire Claw is going to send me into the long sleep. So, Whimsicott kind of did what it needed to do. I neutralized the threat that was the Walking Wake, and honestly, without the Wake around, Golurk is finally in a safe position. So, they have one Mon after the Sneasler, that's going to be the Garganacle. And I'm like, okay, this is actually perfect because we do a pretty good job at being a good check to the Sneasler. Uh, I can actually now guarantee live in acrobatics. It's a pretty hard hit move without its air balloon anymore, but it allows me to fire off a choice banded earthquake, absolutely destroy that thing. And for once, Golurk actually gets to use his choice band to guarantee some damage. So the final Mon being this Garg is actually amazing because while this thing 
is just usually a dickhead. With uh, a choice banded Golurk, I can go for that stab earthquake, be faster, and check this out. Extremely satisfying. We're able to knock this thing out in one hit, and down goes, I believe, even a fully defensive uh, Garg there. So that is amazing. That's going to finish off the game, and Golurk finally got himself a position to uh, come in pretty clutch there, and that's going to be the end of that one. So. That was honestly a pretty good game. The uh, management of the sun was basically the win condition. And uh, again, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you stuck around. It seems like some people enjoy the longer videos and some people like them shorter, which is understandable. So I'm just out here experimenting. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think and I will catch you next time. Peace out.